All right. So again, welcome to our Sabbath school. We are uh, in our series, Church Discipline as a Means of Grace. Uh, this afternoon, there won't be any introduction about history because our entire lecture is about history. So we'll go on, go ahead and study our 13th lecture, the last of uh, this series. So praise God uh, for um, persevering us, uh, sp especially in our study. Our lecture this afternoon is about the discipline in church history. I'd like to begin in the first century to the fourth century, or what is commonly called as the patristic uh, period. No? We'll begin the, in our, our study there, and we'll look at how they uh, administered church discipline in their time. Now, of course, yung time ng mga apostles, that was first century, no? from the time of Christ up to uh, 99 AD. That's the first century. And dahil fresh pa yung teachings ni Christ, teachings ng mga apostles, of course, we can see the faithfulness of many churches in their time. That's what we see here first, that they are faithful against moral impurity and false doctrines. Okay? Again, yung, yung, yung church discipline is a standard practice in every church because obviously that was commanded by Christ and applied by the apostles in the early church. And of course, nagpatuloy yun sa first century. Uh, if you can remember, if you know, yung mga, merong mga early church fathers na tinatawag, sila ay direct uh, disciples ng mga apostles. So for example, sila Ignatius, sila Polycarp, galing yan doon sa uh, discipleship ni uh, Apostle John. Okay? So they applied, Ignatius applied church discipline in his church in Antioch. Um, Polycarp applied the discipline taught by the apostles, of course taught by Christ through the apostles. He taught, he, he, he exercised, administered church discipline, Polycarp, in his church when he was a bishop in Smyrna. So faithful talaga ang mga churches noon. Okay? Their faithfulness were seen in their commitment to expel church members. Talagang ine-expel nila. Okay? Talagang merong nangyayaring excommunication nung time nila. Okay? Especially those who are straying from moral purity and from true doctrine. Okay? Isa dyan, of course, si Justin Martyr na namuhay, no? Second century na to si, si Justin Martyr, pero na 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 umabot sa kanya yung faithfulness ng uh, pag-administer ng church discipline, siya, he was excluding those no, who were under discipline from the Lord's Supper. Okay? So even that, that kind of discipline is not a, it's not a modern time, type of discipline. It's been going on. In fact, turo pa nga yan ni Paul. Okay? So, ina-apply yan ng early church. Hindi lang yan. Pati si Tertullian, sabi niya, uh, again, si Tertullian na buhay from 2nd century to 3rd century, sabi niya, so he explained that Christians who committed sin and strayed from, quote-unquote, he said, the rule of our teaching, or they cease to be counted, they cease to be counted Christians among us. Okay, yung mga unrepentant, talagang they expel them from their churches, and sabi niya, they cease to be counted Christians among us. Okay? Again, when we you know, we'll go back to the doctrine of excommunication, excommunication is not just okay, let's just uh just because we don't want the responsibility, okay, let's do that. No. Excommunication is the church declaring that oh, we're not believing anymore. Hindi na kami naniniwala, hindi na nagtutugma yung profession of faith ng member, ng ka-member at yung kanyang buhay. Yun yung excommunication. Okay? Sabi nga, again, ni Tertullian, sa kanyang uh, uh, writing na apology, he said, hindi apology as in sorry, ah, defense yung apology. Ibig sabihin, for judgment is past, he said, and it carries great weight as it must among men certain that God sees them. And it is a notable foretaste of judgment to come. Remember, 
yung uh, judgment ng church does not really say na okay, totally he's not a Christian, he cannot be a Christian anymore. That's that's not what it means. But it is a foretaste of the coming judgment if they do not truly repent. Okay? So he said, if any man has so sinned as to be banished from all share in our prayer, our assembly, and all holy intercourse. So talagang uh, ginagawa nila tong mga to. Okay? So when a church does that, the church is not really being so strict. It's something that is being practiced even in the early church. Okay? Isa pang example dyan, no? si uh, Emperor Theodosius na sinasabi na siya daw ang mastermind sa massacre ng Thessalonica. Okay? Uh, yun yung napabalita at umabot yon doon kay uh, Ambrose of Milan. Tapos nagrepent si Emperor Theodosius. Nagpakita siya ng signs of humility, signs of repentance, at nagjo-join siya ng church. However, si Ambrose of Milan, hindi niya pina-admit kaagad-agad sa Lord's Supper. Hindi kaagad siya pumayag until talagang nakitang tunay na repentant si Theodosius. Again, massacre yung issue. <laughs> Pero, nagrepent si Theodosius. Pero makikita rin natin yung seriousness ng church, seriousness ng bishop ng time na yun, which who is Ambrose of Milan, na hindi basta-basta nag-a-admit. Okay? It took time para i-admit sa supper si Emperor Theodosius. Sabi nga ni, uh, uh, ni, ni Ambrose of Milan, he said, that man, referring to Emperor Theodosius, that man sins is no cause for surprise. What is blameworthy is his failure to acknowledge his error and humble himself before God. Probably Emperor Theodosius was showing outward signs of humility at first. That's why Ambrose of Milan did not admit um, Emperor Theodosius to the table. Okay? Sabi rin ni Gregory Wills sa kanyang book na Those Who Must Give an Account, he was commenting dun sa story na yon. He said, the Roman Emperor Theodosius had to make public confession. Kailangan daw publicly i-confess ni Theodosius yung kanyang involvement at yung kanyang kasalanan para mapakita na talagang repentant siya. We, we, we studied, right? We studied the true nature of repentance, right? And it's one of those, confession of sins, okay? And so Ambrose of Milan required Emperor Theodosius to publicly confess his sins, Sabi niya, or lose his place in the church of God. Theodosius, him, Theodosius humbled himself. For some weeks, he attended the church in the place assigned for penitents and could not receive communion. At Christmas, Ambrose readmitted him to the communion of the church. Okay, hindi ito a few months. Ha? We're talking about years here. Okay? Yung pag-admit sa kanya. Later, mas maraming years ang makikita natin na practice ng mga early church. Okay? So the point here is this. The early church remained faithful, especially in practicing suspension in membership or what we call limited avoidance. They were faithful in exercising, administering such type of uh, censures. Okay? They were uh, faithful in practicing limited avoidance and excommunication. Makikita natin yun doon. Okay? Kasama sa limited avoidance yung, of course, not admitting them to the supper. So that's what we can see. Firstly, they were faithful. Okay? Faithful sa kanilang pag-practice ng church discipline. Secondly, what we can see in the first uh, first century to fourth century, we can see a stricter administration of discipline. They were children of their time. It was a time wherein there, more, there was too much persecution. There was too much heresies. Maraming nag-grow na heresies specifically about Jesus Christ and about the Trinity. Okay? Yun yung time nila. And so, nagkaroon ng stricter administration ng discipline. They wanted, make, they wanted to make sure if, if their members are truly Christians or ad adhering to the heresies in their time. Kaya stricter ang administration nila ng discipline. Okay? So again, due to growing number of these, churches wanted to make sure that the conversions and repentance were truly genuine. 
And because stricter yung administration, of course, pati yung restoration naging mahirap. There were excommunications, yes. Even the, how they restored those people who were excommunicated became so difficult. Okay? Especially in the 4th century. The churches have adopted a standard practice of what they call penitential discipline. Ibig sabihin, they have to show signs of repentance. In fact, yung signs na yun ay uh, ini-equate to good works. Okay, good deeds. Meron silang, uh, in fact, four stages. Okay? Stages of penitential discipline. Ano yun? Unang-una, ikaw ay magiging weeper muna. Okay? You must be a weeper. They were required to come to church, but not in the actual place of worship. They were to stand outside begging for the prayers of the faithful. Okay? Ganun po ang church discipline ng time nila. Meron, yun yung unang stage. In, in, medyo hinihiwalay muna nila. Okay? Weepers. Hindi ko alam kung meron silang conference room doon o sa, may gate sila doon at nasa labas lang. Pero most probably, hindi doon sa mismong uh, worship hall nila. Okay? Pangalawa, kung ikaw ay, in a way, sa church, eh, nakapasa ka doon, pagiging weeper, at okay, Uh, naging faithful siya doon sa pag-undergo niya ng first stage na yan. Meron pong second stage. Hearer. Hearer na siya. Okay? After the prescribed period ng church, they were allowed to be inside the place of worship. They were to be separated though from church members. Okay? Ganito yung... Uh, yung kagustuhan ng church na makita ang tunay na repentance inside ng kanilang church. Ganito po yung ginagawa nila. But yes, we can say na it's really stricter. Right? Pangatlo, merong kneelers. Okay? Mga lumuluhod. After the prescribed period, after mo maging hero, ikaw na ay kneeler, they were assigned the period of service among the worshippers. Kneeling, it's a sign of service. So sila ay parahil nag sila ng mga pews or nag ng mga pagkain. So doon nakikita ang kanilang humility. Okay? Ngayon, kung may na-recognize kayong gano'n, hindi po mga kneeler yon, Mga deacons po yung mga nagsaservice. Sila po ang mga nag, sila po ang nagsaserve sa church. Okay? Baka ma-misunderstand. Okay, ka, kneeler ba to Hindi po, deacons po. Okay? O kung hindi deacons, may diaconate heart. Okay? So segue din. Sa August 29, may deacons conference po. So sa mga deacons, saka kung ikaw ay tingin mo, member ka at meron kang diaconate heart, approach mo lang ako at uh, pag-usapan natin. Anyway, so after being a kneeler, siya ay magiging stander. Okay? Hindi tander. Stander. Okay? They can now stay during the administration. of the Lord's Supper, but were not allowed to partake. They're not allowed to partake, but they can worship with the church. Okay, so yun po yung four stages of penitential discipline in their time. Now, do all churches practice these stages? Of course not. Okay, but this is something na prevalent at makikita sa most okay, ng mga churches. So after completing the four stages, the bishop or yung pastor will reinstate the member at magiging, well, magiging covenant member na uli ng church yung na-discipline. Okay? Now si Basil of Caesarea, meron siyang sinulatan uh, na isang fellow pastor or fellow bishop nung time niya Uh, on, on, kung paano daw dapat i-discipline yung member nila. So, sinulatan niya, binigyan niya ng advice. Sabi ni Basil, for four years, dapat yung member niyo, he ought to weep. Okay, four years, sabi ni Basil. Standing outside the door of the house of prayer, beseeching the faithful. So, again, nakikita niyo yung four stages, right? Beseeching the faithful as they enter into, offer prayers in his behalf. 
and confessing his own sin. After four years, he will be admitted among the hearers. And during five years, he will go out with them. So that's what? How many years? Ganun kadami yun. Okay? So, blessing, no? Uh, tayo yung namubuhay sa 2022. <laughs> Meron pa si Gregory, o oh, oh, sabi ni Basil, let me continue, sabi niya, During seven years, he will go out with the kneelers praying. During four years, he will only stand with the faithful and will not take part in the oblation or the Lord's Supper. On the completion of this period, he will be admitted to the sacraments of the Lord's Supper. That's what he's referring to. Sabi din ni uh, Gregory Flissa, isa sa mga okay na church uh, fathers nung time nila, sabi niya, Ito lang yung medyo kakaiba lang. No? He recommended 27 years doon sa mga uh, those who are who committed murder and then nagre-repent. Kailangan 27 years of um, penitence. Okay? 18 years of adult. It's doon sa mga uh, guilty sa adultery. 9 years for fornication and whole life for those who renounce the faith and then try to repent but you will pay for it your entire life. Yung kanilang understanding. Ngayon yung how they applied their church discipline in their time. Okay? And so again, no public confession is required from a penitent member. And that's what we can see also in the early church. Pangatlo. So again, a stricter. Kaya nilagay natin just stricter kasi stricter compared sa how we do it. Talaga, ngayon. No? And we believe that it's not that strict when Christ gave Matthew chapter 18. Yes, it is. We have to be faithful, but it shouldn't take your entire life no? for you to repent. Okay? Kasi malinaw doon sinabi ni Paul sa 2 Thessalonians. Kung nagre-repent na talaga, kung nakita mo may signs of repentance na talaga, sabi niya, i-readmit niyo na. Or, kawawa naman siya because of excessive sorrow, sabi ni Paul. Right? Imagine mo, 27 years, whole life, right? Medyo mabigat lang yun. Okay? Pangatlo, we can see that they really protected the testimony of the church. And again, sila ay children ng time nila. Uh, mag magkamali ka lang ng doktrina mo about Christ, about the Trinity, and you claim yourself to be a Christian. Kahit naniniwala ka that Christ is a lower deity or has a lower nature than God the Father, you will claim to be a Christian. And that's a known heresy in their time. That's why sila talaga pinotektahan nila ang totoong Christianity. Okay? Na, for example, si Tertullian, he opposed a second opportunity of repentance. Nung time din nila, nagkaroon sila ng idea that there are two kinds of repentance. First repentance and second repentance. First repentance is the time wherein you uh, were converted to Christianity. You repented of your sins and you, come, you, you, you came to faith in Christ. That was the first repentance. And now, second repentance, yung idea nila dito is that ikaw ay kristyano na at nagkasala ka, yun na yung second repentance. After the second repentance, wala na yun. May mga ganong idea ng early church. Okay? In fact, isa na rin si Tertullian doon. So sabi na, he opposed, uh, sorry, he opposed, rather, hindi siya, okay? yung iba. He opposed a second opportunity uh, of repentance. Oh yeah, he opposed a second opportunity of repentance for Christians who committed murder specifically. Those who committed grave sins, wala nang opportunity for repentance for them. Okay? Kung maalala nyo, in our previous lectures na nabanggit natin, which is also adopted by many churches, even up to our, our time, na kapag sila ay nahuli, bil, like uh, uh, na, nakasuhan, in-excommunicate ka agad because of their protection sa testimony ng church. Okay, but I wanna say na ang, dapat ang stand natin dito is that we would stand for truth na kapag hindi naman talaga kasalanan ng isang tao that we would stand by the person uh, dahil yun yung katotohanan. So hindi natin kaagad i-excommunicate just because nakasuhan ang isang tao. So wanna make it clear lang. Okay? But in their time, hindi. Talagang ito ay tinatanggal nila kaagad sa kanilang church. 
Okay, murder, adultery, idolatry, or apostasy, and said that they could never be restored to the church. Okay, so bigyan hindi daw nag apply sa kanila yung second opportunity for repentance ito sa mga taong ito. Kasi grabe daw ang kanilang kasalanan. Where in fact, even in murder or sexual immorality pa yan, kahit anong sin pa yan, rape, homosexuality, whatever that is, we believe that they can still be saved. Okay? Na, na, na hindi maaandan ng mga ganong sins yung ginawa ni Christ sa cross. Okay? What else? Merong um, sec, sec, eto sikat na second century writing, yung Shepherd of Hermas. In fact, nung time nila, they thought that is, this is part of the canon, na ito ay parte ng talagang scriptures. At there was a time na talagang tinuwit nila ito na canon, ibig sabihin, parte ng scriptures, at merong time na tinanggal nila at binalik uli nila at tinanggal uli nila. Okay? Ito yung Shepherd of Hermas. Oh, kung nagtataka kayo, wala ang picture dyan kasi supposedly picture siya ni Jesus Christ. So tinanggal ko. Para hindi nyo mamukaan. Para hindi nyo, kasi second commandment, violation. Sabi doon, to protect the name of the church, the writer proposed that there is no other repentance after the first conversion repentance and that the sinner cannot anymore be restored to the church. Okay? Medyo mas malala lang ang, ang posisyon ng writer ng Shepherd of Hermas kasi kapag ikaw ay na-convert, na hindi ka na uh, maaring, wala nang opportunity again for you. Hindi ka na makakabalik. So ganun yung understanding nila sa protection ng testimony ng church. Okay? Not only that, in the 3rd or 4th century, if Christians publicly sinned after baptism, they are only allowed one repentance, any subsequent sin, would expel them from the church permanently. Okay? So again, because of how they protect their testimony. Now, from 1st to 4th century, in fact, medyo pababa siya ng pababa, merong declension ng pag-exercise or administer ng church discipline. But, come 312-315 AD, noong naging na, na si Emperor Constantine ay talagang sinasabi niya naging Christian siya no at uh, hiningi ng manage ng mga churches yung tulong niya dahil matalino siyang emperor doon uli nagkaroon ng rise ng Christianity okay and so pupunta na tayo doon sa medieval times okay so before the end of the 4th century, there was a big split in the, in the churches. Okay? Now, itong mga churches na to, hindi nila kayang mag-decide. And so ginawa nila, humingi sila ng tulong, hindi sa, hindi sa mga pastors, kundi sa emperor. At simula noon, naging uh, trend na ito na humihingi ng tulo ang mga churches kay Emperor Constantine hanggang dito na talagang nagsimula yung pag-intertwine ng church and state. Okay? Dito na nagsimula, especially in the time of Constantine. And then, of course, kaya pagpasok ng medieval times, eto talaga, dito talaga yung, 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 yung state na yung nagdi-decide ng pagdiscipline ng mga Church. That is why the medieval times is also called the dark ages or the dark times or the dark era. Okay, why? Because discipline is handled by the state, hindi na churches. Okay, what else can we see in the medieval times? Yes, si Emperor Constantine. Firstly, there was a decline of apostolic approach. Okay, nagkaroon ng declension. Uh, makikita natin yan especially kay Nectarius na gin- kung, kung, kung ang mga early church ay nagbabar sila from supper, si Nectarius ang ginagawa niya, no, it's now a matter of individual conscience. If you think that you're a Christian, oh, go ahead. If you think that you have sinned, if you think that you're not, then do not partake. So ganun na. Right? Nagkakaroon, nagkaroon na ng decline sa especially sa pag-administer ng uh, ng Lord's Supper. And then strict discipline also withered, especially in the West and in the East. Not only that, churches and bishops, bishops are elders or pastors, 
wrote penitential manuals designed to guide them in administering discipline. Ano yung mga penitential manuals na yun? For example, like this one. Okay? Makikita natin dyan, these penitential manuals became a standard system of penance from 6th to 9th century. Kung kumalat itong mga manuals na ito at ginagamit talaga ng mga churches. So naging standard ito. Ano pa? The manual did not prescribe public confession of sin. Rather, a private confession of a sinner to a bishop. So we can see here a transition. Nagta-transition na from the apostolic approach, biblical approach, to now a different approach. To now a Roman Catholic approach. Right? Kaya siya tinatawag na Dark Ages din kasi dito talaga nag-flourish ang Roman Catholicism. In fact, that is my second point under this heading. Ano pa? The length of discipline were greatly shortened from the periods prescribed. We're talking about days. Days. Pagdating ng time nila. Okay, that's too short. Right? That's too early to say, ah, okay, that's a repentant person. Okay? So secondly, so there's a decline, but there's also a rise of the Roman Catholicism or Romanism. And its rise turned penitence, yung repentance, yung pag-show ng humility, into an actual deed na tinatawag na sacrament of penance. Kung maalala nyo yung pag-aaral natin sa Roman Catholic theology, right, na ang bawat miyembro or sinner from the Roman Catholic system ay kailangan mag-undergo or go through ng mga sacraments, right? Yung kanilang communion, kanilang confession, uh, ano pa, marami pa, right? So isa to, okay? Nagkaroon ng sak, naging sacramento na talaga siya. Okay? Sacrament of penance. Sabi nga sa Fourth Lateran Council, all the faithful of both sexes shall after they have reached the age of discretion faithfully, confess all their sins at least once a year to their own priest. Okay? Uh, 13th century na ang Fourth Lateran Council. So, ang Roman Catholicism kasi hindi siya yung tipong, okay, let us start at this year, this system, hindi siya ganun eh. Okay? Paunti-unti ang mga doktrina ng Roman Catholicism. Okay? Pero before the Fourth Lateran Council, meron na mga confession to the pri privately to the priest na nangyayari. Okay? That is how, that is, ganun na ngayon, paano makikita yung repentance ng isang tao? They must confess to the priest. Okay? So then, and perform to the best of their ability the penance imposed. Makikita natin kung paano nagiging good works. Nagiging good works na. Okay? Receiving reverently at least at Easter the sacrament of the Eucharist or communion or Lord's Supper, of course, in the Roman Catholic system. Unless perchance at the advice of their own priest, they may for a good reason abstain for a time from its reception. Otherwise, they shall be cut off from the church during life and deprived of Christian burial in death. Malinaw na malinaw na dyan ang doctrine ng Roman Catholicism. Okay? Now, from the medieval times, from the 5th to 16th century, napaka- uh, Napakahabang time nito, right? Kaya nga, na-appreciate ng many churches talaga kung paano nagsimula ang Reformation, especially how God raised up men like Jan Hus, uh, Martin Luther, uh, Ulrich Zwingli, John Calvin, of course, in different locations, pero almost at the same time, right? Yun na yung tinatawag nating Protestant Reformation. And in their time, it wasn't just a restoration of the doctrine of salvation, that salvation should be faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone. Hindi lang yun eh. Kasama doon, ang effect noon would be a restoration of what the church really is. Okay? And so, nagkaroon lang, what we can see there, especially pag patungkol sa church discipline, it, there was a restoration of the church discipline doctrine. Yung doktrina. We're not saying that the doctrine was invented in their time. It was restored. Because in a way, 
it was lost during the Dark Ages. So it was restored, reformed. Ganon ang nangyari. No? Yun yung effect ng reformation of the doctrine of salvation. There was a reformation of the doctrine of the church. Sabi nga ni John Calvin, sa kanyang institutes, he said, Hence, as the saving doctrine of Christ is the life of the church, so discipline is. As it were, it's sinews. Sinews yung uh, kalakasan, strength. For to it is owing that the members of the body adhere together, each in its own place. Wherefore, all who either wish that discipline were abolished or who impede the restor restoration of it, whether they do this of design or through thoughtlessness, certainly aim at the complete devastation of the church. Okay, big sabihin, if there were churches who do not who, who resist or do not want to administer discipline or do not like or love the doctrine of this church discipline, they were aiming at the complete devastation of the church. Ni sinasabi rito ni John Calvin. Now again, I said there is a restoration of the doctrine. However, it wasn't easy in their time. Hindi kagad nila ito basta-basta na-apply sa kanilang mga churches. That's why there was a struggle in the application of church discipline in their time. Remember, state and church ay hindi separated noong time nila. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, even, so, so ang nangyayari, the keys of the kingdom are held not by churches noong time nila, but by the state. So they have that understanding, those who got reformed through Luther and Calvin, however, hindi nila ma-apply yung doktrina na yun sa kanilang churches. Just like Calvin, he, he, uh, he taught the doctrine of the Lord's Supper, pero siya mismo hindi na na-experience yung weekly. Pero when he taught it, when he wrote it in his institutes, he was lobbying for a weekly Lord's Supper. Pero siya hindi niya na-experience na yun. Ganun din pagdating sa church discipline. There was a struggle. The magistrates, yung mga civil magistrates, mga leaders during that time, they didn't want to give churches the power, the authority to excommunicate members. Nakasalalay daw yun sa state. Kaya nga, kapag ka heretical ka sa, sa, pag, sa paningin ng state, pwede mo ikamatay. Ganun nangyari kay Jan Haas, uh, yung a century earlier than uh, Martin Luther. Okay? And so John Calvin struggled for years. He struggled for years in convincing the rulers, the city rulers in Geneva to acknowledge the church's right to exercise discipline. Naging pastor siya sa Geneva noong 1536, pero siya ay na-expel from the city. Okay? He was expelled dahil he didn't want to administer the supper to unrepentant sinners. If you've heard of the story that there were liberals who would want to partake of the Lord's Supper and he was like, parang tumalun siya dun sa mesa at talagang ayaw niyang ipagpartake yung mga alam niyang hindi naman repentant sinners. Okay? He was expelled sa Geneva but tinawagan din siya ng mga so, tinawagan or wala pang cellphone nun. Um, Sinabihan siya na bumalik siya sa Geneva nung time na yon after many years. Uh, noong 1538, actually, he was re-invited back because there was an issue. Can Calvin accepted with the condition of his church's freedom to administer discipline. Okay? Of course, hindi rin to kaagad-agad na apply. Just like yung kanyang kagustuhan sa Lord's Supper. Now, again, nakatulong itong reformation ng doctrine na to. Bakit? Dahil pagdating ng mga 15th to 17th century, there were a, not a monolithic group. Uh, sobrang nag-benefit ang Reformation dito sa mga tinatawag silang Puritans kasi sila mismo yung talagang nag-stand firm. Yung iba, in their standing firm, they left the country no, so that they can uh, build and plant churches where they can apply this uh, Christ-given commands like church discipline. So, doon napapasok ang Puritan era. Okay? 
And so in that time, there was a freedom. Freedom of many churches to observe faithful discipline. And of course, hindi naman nawala ang persecution ng mga time na yan. There was persecution of many Christians, especially in the 17th century. Okay? Persecution in the beginning of the Puritan era till the early 17th century. Kung maaalala nyo, in the 17th century, merong, uh, nang, may pinang, yung, merong tatlong grupo na sila ay galing sa roots ng Puritans. Naalala nyo ba kung ano yung tatlong grupo na yon? Presbyterianism, yung mga umaten ng uh, membership, Presbyterianism, Congregationalism, and hindi baptism kasi isim yung mga ano yun, Baptists. Okay? Lahat yon ay galing sila doon sa mga Puritans. Pero early 17th century, sila mismo yung medyo nagkakaroon ng banggaan because of their doctrines. Okay? Yung iba naniniwala sa infant baptism, yung mga Baptists hindi sila naniniwala. Tapos yung mga Presbyterians, a congregation na sinasabi sa mga Baptists, oh, Kayo, hindi namin kayo katulad. In fact, kayo nga ay mga Anabaptists. Yung mga Anabaptists kasi mga time na yon mga heretical yun eh. Okay, naniniwala sila sa mga new revelation. Pero yung mga Baptists, teka, nagkakamali kayo, hindi kami ganun. In fact, pareho tayo. Pero nagkaiba tayo sa infant baptism at nagkaiba rin tayo pagdating sa church government. In fact, ito yung, ito yung confession of faith namin, no? 1644, 1689. Kaya nagkaroon ng mga confession of faith para lang maging malinaw dito sa tatlong grupo na to kung ano yung stand nila. So add to that, yung persecution pa ng Church of England. Na sobrang persecuted na itong tatlong grupo na to Alam mo nangyari? Naparoon di ba yung endgame? Yung endgame, di ba nagkampiyan sila lahat? Ganon din <laughs> yung tatlong grupo na yun. no Nagkaroon sila na in a way, nag, nag, they, they found a common enemy sa Church of England. Kaya nga pagdating ng 1689, nagkaroon ng Act of Toleration na tinatawag na kung saan ang Church of England ay tinolerate na hinayaan na yung mga non-conformists to have their own worship services. Okay? That's why naging open na yung mga Baptists to publicly uh, i-publicize na ang kanilang confession of faith. Hence, kaya tinatawag natin 1689 yung uh, sinasubscribe nating confession of faith. Okay? So nagkaroon ng freedom. So itong mga taon to na na-reform ang kanilang idea of church discipline, they were able to apply church discipline in their time. Okay? So nagkaroon pa rin ng implementation of stricter discipline. Bakit stricter na naman? Bakit stricter? Due to the existence of the Church of England, the faithful churches wanted to make sure that the members of their churches were true Christians. Okay? O baka naman mga spia from Church of England. Okay? Actually, may mga step, may mga procedures sila pag mag apply ka. Meron sila mga step-by-step uh, -step procedure na kailangan mong gawin. Okay? So many Puritans wrote specific guidelines on excommunication and even restoration. Kasama na si Richard Baxter. Okay? In fact, gumawa siya ng guidelines niya. Three-day period of prayer para sa mga, ano to ah, bago mag-excommunicate daw. Kailangan ganito gawin ng church. Sabi niya, there must be a three-day period of prayer to precede it. Then the congregation was to assemble. Ano pa, prayer will again be offered on behalf of the impenitent. Scriptures such as Leviticus 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 5 would be read and commented on. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 5 when, where Paul uh, admonishes the church of Corinth kung anong dapat nilang gawin to not to associate with anyone who, uh, who, who, who professes Christianity and but guilty of uh, sin. So yun yung pinapaalala ni Richard Baxter. After a detailed statement of the offender's sins and the means vainly used to reclaim him, it would be declared that he was from henceforth to be no longer a member of this congregation, but must be cast out into the world and no longer be partaker with us in the holy mysteries of the Lord, nor in fellowship with us, nor enjoy the privileges of God's house. Okay? So may mga ganyan. Hindi lang siya, pati si Thomas Brooks. Sabi ni Thomas Brooks, 
Oh, sorry, meron pa si Richard Baxter. Sabi niya, the congregation would be admonished to treat him, pinapaalala. Pinapaalala daw. Kailangan paalala sa church na paano yung relationship nyo doon sa inexcommunicate. The person must be treated as a heathen and a publican, a tax collector or a Gentile. Till he should be received back. And meanwhile, to pray for his soul, sometimes this act would be accompanied by a congregational fast. Okay? Sabi din ni Thomas Brooks, true penitential confession is free, nagbigay siya ng mga qualifications, free and voluntary, not forced, full and complete, sincere, distinct and not confused, sorrowful, always mixed with faith, accompanied by reformation of life. Guidelines ng church ni Thomas Brooks. Okay? Kapag merong under discipline. So makita natin from the patristic period up to the Puritan period, nagkaroon talaga ng well, faithfulness and then na-decline. Tapos nagkaroon ng reformation, restoration. no And then hindi lang yung doktrina na-restore, pati yung application specifically pagdating ng Puritans. But then nung time natin ngayon, which is susunod ko ngayon, no? um, na nilagay ko dyan as modern times. Okay? Ito, ito yung makikita natin. Kukot ko si Robert, uh, 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 R. Albert Muller, uh, rather. He said, By the turn of the century, however, church discipline was already on the decline. Criticism of the Bible and of the doctrines of evangelical orthodoxy was widespread. Even the most conservative denominations began to show evidence of decreased attention to the theological orthodoxy. At the same time, the larger culture moved toward the adoption of autonomous moral individualism. Okay? Parang yung mga tao, parang they would rather be alone and not be a part of a church. No? That they, they don't even want to submit to the authority of the church. No? Of course, ano yung expect natin? Do, will they submit to discipline? Of course not. Right? Ito yung nagkaroon ng rise ngayon, moral individualism. The result of these internal and external developments was the abandonment of church discipline. Parang gusto ko basta yung nakagaroon ako. As ever, larger portions of the church members' life were considered off-limits to the congregation. So what we can see here, unang-una, is there is this accommodation of accommodation to the rights culture. Right? I have rights. Now we're not saying na walang rights, human rights ang isang tao. Right? But of course, this is abused. Right? To the point na no one wants discipline. No one wants to submit to authority anymore. Okay? So rebuke has become offensive and individual rights were more important than moral responsibility. Rights in a sense na if you're rebuked about your sin, teka, right ko yun eh. Okay? Ganun na ngayon. Ang problema... Sa churches, nagka-ina-accommodate itong culture na ito ngayon. Okay? Sabi din ni, again, ni Albert Muller, this right stock is not limited to secular society. Church members are so committed to their own version of right stock that some congregations accept almost any behavior, belief, or lifestyle as acceptable or at least off limits to congregational sanction. Okay, ganun na ang time natin ngayon. Okay, not only that, there is also a triumph of the therapeutic. Okay, there is this triumph of the therapeutic. The theological category of sin has been replaced with a psychological concept of therapy. Ganun na ngayon. Oh, that person is sinning, outright sinning. Hindi, baka meron lang problem sa kanyang um uh, understanding o psychological lang problema then anong kailangan ano ang kailangan gawin okay gamot ka agad i'm not saying na walang effect ang mga gamot ha? i'm not saying that ha? but the problem is the churches now immediately go there without properly discerning okay ito ba ay okay at meron ka agad siyang ganito except instead of sin unit sin unit Okay? There is this triumph of the therapeutic. And it is a danger sa church. Pangatlo, there is a rise of the progressive thought. Okay? Progressive thought. The idea 
Now, we should not look back at history and learn from them. In fact, yung mga nangyayari ngayon, that, that is progressive Christianity. We should accept that. Of course not. Right? We can't do that. Yung mga tingin natin na merong uh, parang achievements ngayon ng church na hindi pa na-achieve before ng church ngayon ay sobrang ac accepting na na hindi na masyadong mas, mas strict pagdating sa admission ng members. Hindi na masyado tinitingnan ang, ang buhay nung nag apply or hindi na masyado tinitingnan o nagiging accountability ang mga tao, that's because this is the new church. Nag-grow nag, nag, nag na ang church. So, that, that, tapos na tayo sa before. Hindi na tapat tayo katulad ng before, as strict as before. Of course, that is a progressive thought. And it's also dangerous. So, makikita natin how pagdating sa modern times, ngayon, ano, postmodern na ang thinking, na tipong yung mga tao more on thinking about the modern self. Ito na ang importante ngayon. I have a voice. And my voice is, kailan, mas greater than the voice of God in His Word. That's what's happening now. Okay? And we should be careful also. Why? Even our church can be a victim of that. If we do not stay faithful in the Word of God and in administering church discipline. Okay? And so as a conclusion, every local church is called to continue reforming. In fact, when we say that we are a reformed church, we're saying that we are continuing our reformation in our church. Bakit? Kasi there are lots of heresies and progressive thought that are trying to come in sa ating church. So we should continue reforming not just in doctrine, but especially in the practice of church discipline. Okay? And so final challenge ko lang, just to end this 13-week series, let us all submit to the formative discipline of the church. Formative discipline, ibig sabihin, yung preaching, teaching of the word, and let the word of God convict us, speak to us, that's formative discipline. And it speaks to us and tells us to turn away from our sins and come to faith in Christ. Let us do it. Because if, it's, if we don't do it, papasok dito yung corrective church discipline and our sins may become public and may be exposed through the providence of God. So let us all submit to the discipline formatively and be faithful in administering corrective discipline Seeking for the restoration of sinners, let us not forget that that is our main goal in discipline, the restoration of sinners, and of course, it is for the praise of God's glory. So that is our that is a challenge for everyone, uh, just to end this series, church discipline as a means of grace. We have five minutes. Do you have any questions? Uh, I, yes, I have two questions. Yung unang question ko is, kailan ba natin uumpisahan yung practice ng mga weepers sa labas <laughs> ng chapel? <laughs> so, I'll your question po, uh, today po. <laughs> Seriously, uh, my question is, in, in the first to fourth centuries, parang the practice of uh, church discipline was initiated to sort of keep out the non you not non -tool, truly Christians. Um, I'm just wondering what was the motivation of the Gentiles and the non non Christians of even wanting to join a church? Bakit sila gustong maging member kaya kaila magkaroon ng parang filter right. for them. What was the motivation for them to join? The so, church was it social, social economic ba o meron bang prestige? I'm I'm not sure kung bakit nila magi gusto magi member. Right. So, uh, great question. So the answer to Deacon Joey's question will be the same 
uh, even in our time, uh, the same motivation in our time to join a church, ganun din po sa kanila when they hear the word. When they hear the word preached to them, so kagaya po sa book of Acts, when, especially in Acts chapter 2, when si Peter nag-sermon siya, and then the Gentiles heard, tinanong, uh, even the Jews, even nung time na yun, tinanong nila, so what should we do? Repent and be baptized. And then afterwards, nung sila ay naging Kristiyano, nagkaroon na ng Acts chapter 2 verse 42, sila, sabi doon, they partake of the bread and they fellowship with one another. So parang natural consequence siya, or effect rather, nung pag-convert nila at pag-profess uh, nila ng Christianity, naging parte kagad sila ng church. So yun yung motivation nila. When they heard that they have sinned and that there is provision of God, which is in the gospel, they have repented of their sins and come to faith in Christ. Yun yung naging motivation nila to be part of churches. So ganun din po, even now, uh, kahit for Gentiles. I have a question, Paz. Yeah. yeah, I was just wondering because in the patristic period, the boss, he, Theodosius, it says here, Theodosius humbled himself. Yes. In your study of the book, was there any mention of how this humbling looked like? I'm sorry? Was there any mention of how this humbling looked like? His humbling? Yeah. Because he was admitted after a time. Right. So it says, for some weeks, he attended the church in the place assigned for penitence, blah, blah, right. blah, blah. So was there any mention in the book of how that humbling look right. like the actions and stuff. Oh, good question. Hindi ini specify kung ano, pero I think medyo ibinigay sa atin diyan ni Gregory Wills. Sabi niya, uh, sabi niya Theodosius humbled himself for some weeks. He attended the church in the place yeah. assigned for penitence, so may may exclusion doon sa mga under discipline yeah. and could not receive communion and then at a certain time, specifically at Christmas daw, tsaka siya na admit. So, can is it can we conclude that it's that a certain type of obedience also to what the church was also carrying yes, out? Yes, definitely. Okay. So obviously the church has, has given him that uh, sanction to, to be a ano ba yon, weeper. Ba yon? Uh, yes, weeper outside, okay. right? So, in ano niya? Okay, you know, I was just wondering if there were any other stuff. Pero, yeah. Probably Clear. meron pa na yeah. hindi natin alam. Yep. Uh, si Jeng Jeng may question, uh, Chano. Deacon. Hi, Paz. Doon sa may patristic period, doon sa matagal, yung many years ng discipline, like yung 27 years, ganun. Curious lang ako, Paz, if may mga articles or documents na parang nagde-describe if ano yung mga naranasan ng mga na-discipline ng ganong taon, if na-restore ba sila or paano sila nag-persevere? Ganun, Paz. Uh, good question. Actually, may mga ibibigay ako references later on that you can read and meron doon mga part where they uh, sinulat nila yung patungkol doon sa mga under-discipline. So yeah, later, I'll give the references. Sige po, Paz. Sige po, meron pa po ba? Uh, last question, it's 2.30. Okay, sige po. Uh, praise God at uh, congratulations at tayo po ay nag-persevere uh, 13 weeks ng pag-aaral patungkol sa church discipline and uh, I pray that it uh, is beneficial to all of us. Um, here are the references. Uh, if you want to continue studying church discipline and I recommend that you do, uh, maganda po yung books ni una kay Jeremy Kimball, yung 40 questions about church membership and discipline. And then secondly, to answer your question, Jeng, maganda yung those who uh, must give an account. May, maraming authors kasi dito sa book na ito, pero ang editor kasi niya si John Hammett. But makikita mo dito, meron ding sa, yung pinapakita rin nangyari sa church history, especially even to those who uh, went under the, or go, went through the church discipline in their time. So you, you, you may want to uh, check this out. So yan, maganda po yan. Those who must give an account. And then thirdly, I highly recommend this also, yung church discipline ni Jonathan Lehman. Maganda po siya. Uh, in fact, meron pong part dyan na case studies. No? Meron po siyang binigay na examples at kung paano yung mga ginawa ng church um, uh, specifically doon sa mga, um, sa mga members na yon. For example, if there are people who are 
not attending, ano yung ginawa nila, uh, papano kung nakasuhan, ano yung ginawa, maganda po yan. Okay? Hindi lang yan, meron pa po, kay Jonathan Lehman uli, another book, totally different book, um, Understanding Church Discipline, and then if you want to know more about repentance, uh, because we studied uh, two lectures regarding that, napakagandang book po yung kay Thomas Watson. I highly recommend this author. Okay? Uh, so, Thomas Watson, uh, The Doctrine of Repentance, and also yung K.A.W. Pink, The Repentance, What Sayeth um, the Scriptures.